We'll get started and then I'm sure more people will come in. Okay, so, all right. So just to go over um, what we are gonna do today, um, I do have on here that we were gonna go over the quiz if everyone has completed it, but not everyone has, so we won't go over that. Um, we'll review the uses of, and conjugations of Serenus star. Um, maybe some practice for that, depending on how you feel. Um, we'll begin with uh, the stem changing verbs and uh, the instructions for the homework. Okay, so um, just to start for today, um, we have uh, the conjugations of ser, which we've been going over for a while. So we have yo soy, I am, tu eres, you are, el, ella, usted es, he is, she is, you formal are, nosotros or nosotras somos, we are, ellos or ellas, or ustedes son, they are, or you guys are, okay? Remember, we've been going over that. And uh, for the conjugations of a star, we have yo estoy, which means I am, tu estás, you are, el, ella, usted está, he is, she is, you formal are, nosotros or nosotras estamos, and ellos or ellas están and ustedes están, which means they are or you guys are. So just to go over the conjugations. So um, we're just gonna review uh, quickly the uses of ser because we've been using it uh, for a while now. Um, ser is used when referring to more permanent situations, which this isn't always the case, but it's kind of like a guideline. Um, so just remember an acronym that you can use to remember this is doctor. D um, stands for the descriptions of somebody, such as their uh, physical descriptions, their, um, their personality, things like that. Um, o is for occupations, for what they do for a living. Um, C is characteristics like personality, traits, um, physical descriptions. Uh, T is for time, which is when you're telling time or something like that. Um, oh, give me one second. Hi, Deja, how are you? I'm oh, fine. Good. Okay. So, uh, like I said, the T is for time, uh, like when you're telling the time, whether it be the exact time, the day of the week, the month, things like that. Um, o is for origin, like where someone is from, uh, what something is made of, where something was made. Um, and the R is for relationships, whether it be friendships or family relationships or romantic relationships, things like that. Does anybody have any questions or anything on this? Are we okay with that? So um, just to review uh, quickly the uses of a star. So I have here, a star is used to express temporary situations and locations, which this is true for the most part. It's not always like that, but it's a general guideline to help you out. Um, so like I have here, there are a few categories to remember when using a star. So when you're talking about the location or the position of something or some or of something or someone. So you could say like uh, the student is in the classroom. That would be a star because it's a location. Or if you had like uh, the woman is seated, that would be a position. So that's a star. Um, I have here actions with a past participle, which don't really worry about that too much. We didn't go over past participles. Um, uh, conditions is like someone's like physical condition, like, oh, like he is sick, you would use a star. Um, and emotions. So like emotions that aren't going to last forever. Like if you're nervous for something or if you're upset or if you're excited, that is when you would use a star, which, I mean, we went over all this already a couple of times. So does anybody have any questions on any of this? Or are we okay? Okay. So um, just an introduction to uh, stem changing verbs. Uh, there's a lot that we're gonna go over with this, but we're just not gonna do it today because there's pretty much. Um, 
So before we learn to conjugate them, we should understand why these verbs change. And, oh, I'm in the wrong slot. Yeah, okay, so like I have here, we already know the endings and how to conjugate regular, prince, regular present tense verb, and that's just what the quiz was on. Um, so um, we know the endings, we know how to conjugate regular verbs because we went over that. So um, in Spanish, there are some verbs that change in their stem when being conjugated in certain forms. So do you remember um, when we were um, conjugating verbs, we took the stem off of the ending and the stem is what we used to conjugate. So these verbs change in the stem, hence why they're called stem changing verbs. So the endings are the same as what we've already learned. The stems are just altered. They're a little bit different. So um, remember, like I said, we already learned the endings, so they're all the same. And the change usually occurs in the last syllable of the stem. So um, just a list of these changes are, and these are not all verbs, like these are specific verbs. They're specific irregular ones. Uh, the ones that we went over already, those are regular. So um, I'll go over all these with you. So um, just uh, the changes that will happen in some of these verbs, sometimes the E goes to an IE, sometimes the O goes to a UE, sometimes the E goes to an I, sometimes the I goes to an IE, sometimes the U goes to a UE. And some of these are way more common than others. Um, and like I said, we'll go over each of these individually. So don't like be freaked out or anything right now. So um, like I have here, uh, we should, before we learn to conjugate them, we should understand like why they change. Um, so uh, the reason most of them change is because of spelling and pronunciation. Um, so in Spanish, most words are pronounced exactly as they're spelled, which um, most words are, not all of them, but most of them. Um, so the stems change in stem changing verbs in order to avoid an awkwardness in pronunciation. Like a lot of them would like, sound weird if like you said them without the change and that's why they change them sometimes they change them because um because of a spelling issue um they want them to like all be spelled the same so but most times it's because of pronunciation does anybody have any questions or anything on this so far okay, okay. So um, to go over um, what I consider to be the boot. So um, when we begin to look at these stem changing verbs, you'll realize that only the stem changes in, that the stem only changes in all other forms other than the nosotros form. So when, so when you look at these stem changing verbs, like in the chart that I've been giving you like this, um, you'll see that they all, like the stems will change in all of these verbs, except for the nosotros form. Um, so uh, when looking at our conjugation chart, which I have down here, the verbs that do change in the stem take the shape of a boot. So right here, you see that. And like I said, this isn't completely necessary to conjugate stem changing verbs, but it can help. So I was gonna write on this for you, but I don't know if I know how to do that. Sure, we'll try this. Yeah, so this right here is the boot, right? You can see how that takes the shape of a boot. And that's for all stem changing verbs. None of, oh, none of them change in the nosotros form. So does that make sense to everybody? Are we kind of okay with that? Oh. Great. Okay, so um, I just um, want to introduce you to the stem changing verb vocabulary. Um, so some of these, um, I actually have a whole list of them that change like all of them. So I just picked 15 of them and these are all irregular verbs. I just picked 15 of them to, um, to, uh, that we can work with next class to conjugate them. And I'll show you how the stem changes and things like that. So just to go over them, uh, the first one is querer, which is to want. Soñar is to dream. Repetir is to repeat. Jugar is to play. Dormir is to sleep. Llover is to rain. 
in Kire is to inquire. And I know this one is a little bit weird, but the reason why I included this one is because it's one of the only verbs that does like its little stem changing type thing. So I just included it in so I can show you how that stem changes. Um, Pedir is to ask for. Uh, volar is to fly. Recordar is to remember. Remover is to remove. Poder is to be able to, like to be able to do something. Um, mostrar is to show. Morir is to die. And desir is to say or to tell. Does anybody have any questions on these? Is everybody here? No. You don't have any questions? Okay. Let me just get out of here. And then um, I do want to go over the homework with you guys before we go any further. Oh, what did I do with it? I'm looking for it here. Okay, I know I put it up here. <laughs> oh, yes, this. So um, because I just um, I just showed you the um, the stem changing verbs, our activity for um, the next class is actually going to be um, it's going to be on Sarah and a star still. So um, you're just going to do activity 25, 26 and 27. They're pretty short, so it's only one page. Um, so um, in the directions here, I wanted to show you this. In the directions here, I have like the, um, like I said, um, for um, for activity 25, I gave you the sentence conjugation. I mean, the translations. Why did I write that? Give me one second. The sentence translations. So you um, have to pick whether Sarah or a star is correct in each situation. So if you look at the um, at the assignment here, you'll see that the first one says, mi hijo es or está aburrido porque le quité su celular. So um, that's basically saying my son is bored because I took away his cell phone. So um, would it be es or esta? It would be esta, right? Because he's bored. That's like an emotion, like in the moment type thing. So um, Ahmad, I do see where, like where you came from with that. So, I mean, what you have is fine, but you just have to pick whether it's ser, which is the first option in all of these, or a star. So um, yeah, so Ahmad, what you sent me is fine for that. Um, so does the first, does activity 25 make sense to everybody? Everybody's okay with number 25? Yeah. Okay, great. So um, for activity 26, you're going to decide if ser or star is the right one for each sentence. And then you're going conjug to conjugate uh, the verb. You're going to conjugate ser or star. And you're going to fill in the blank to complete the sentence. So I have this right here for activity 26. And then, like I said, you're going to pick ser or star based on the subject and then conjugate it. So um, for the first one, and I have the translations of the sentences here. Um, for the first one, uh, it asks, are you from the United States? So we have blank to de los Estados Unidos. So that's going to be, are we going to use Sarah or a star for that one? Does anybody want to take a guess? The E word. What was that? The E word, I'm not saying. A star is my dad. Um, it would be um, it is. It would be ser because they're asking. Oh, my fault. Oh no, that's okay. Like from the United States. So like, remember for origin we use ser. So it would be eres tu de los Estados Unidos. So you're gonna and like for the second one you would also use ser because it's saying my purse is made of leather. And remember, uh, that's also an origin thing where we're saying like. Um, like where something is from, what is is made of, that's origin. So, and like I said, feel free to use the PowerPoints and any of that stuff for this. Um, 
And then uh, for this one, um, it says answer the following personal questions using Sarah or a star. So right here, I have the um, translations of the sentences. And um, I also like kind of like uh, gave, started some of the sentences for you. So um, it says, are your friends busy? So you would answer, si ellos están ocupados or no, ellos no están ocupados. So um, there's that for number two, it's how are you today? Um, you would say, yo estoy, how are you doing today? And then uh, number three is asking, how are you? But it's asking like how you are personality wise. So let me show you that. So it says, how are you today? And how are you like, uh, like a person, like personality wise? And we have that clue because it says estas hoy. And remember, estas is a conjugated form of the star, right? And that is, um, that's our like temporary type thing. And it also says today, if you know what hoy means. And um, number three is como eres tú. And remember, eres is a conjugated form of ser. So that's a more permanent situation, right? So that's asking like how you are personality wise. So, um, so you would say yo soy, however you are. Um, number four is kind of an awkward question. It says, um, are all of your heroes alive? And the answer would be like, oh, I spelled that wrong. It would be C, ellos están vivos or no, ellos no están vivos. And then um, for number five, um, it says, what is the name of a person who has died but you admire a lot? So um, you could just like give their name or something like that. Um, and number six, are you shy or outgoing? And you would say, it would say, you would say, yo soy, and then let me show you. You would say, yo soy uh, reservado or ex, uh, extrovertido, which means um, shy is reservado and extrovertido is like outgoing. And I know there's like an at sign here, so you can you, you can put that in um, or if you're a boy and you're answering this, you would say reservado ending in an O or if you're a female, you would say reservada and answering in an A or you can just use the at symbol. Either one is fine with me. So does anybody have any questions or anything on this homework? Is everybody OK with this? And I also wanted to show you one other thing. So um, I have this Sarah versus a star guidelines here. Um, this isn't homework, this is just to help you out. So this comes from uh, the book that I've been using. I know there's an activity at the bottom here, but you're not gonna do that, so don't worry about it. Um, so let's see. So, um, like right here, um, this is just kind of um, going over what I went over before. Um, it says each is used in specific situations and they're not interchangeable, which that is kind of true. But um, like sometimes like when you use them in certain contexts, they mean different things. So, um, so Sarah uh, is right here. It's used with inherent characteristics and identity, which, uh, you know, that's like the job, where you're from, things like that. Um, and a star is used with states of being and location. So um, an exception to location is the location of an event. So remember it says el concierto es en el auditorio. So it's saying the concert is in, is in the auditorium. So like if it's an event, it's uh, gonna use ser. So um, I actually totally forgot about this like little saying here, because I actually knew this and I just forgot to say it. Uh, it says Sarah is for who you are, a stare is for how you are. So like if it's a temporary situation, it's the star. Um, it says here, a popular misconception is that Sarah is permanent and a star is temporary. So, and like I said, it's a guideline, but there are many exceptions to it. Um, like if you're not sure of something, you can guess. And I mean, people will know what you're talking about. Um, you know, they might correct you or something like that. But like an example of that is Elvis Estamorto. Um, so um, 
and then it says life and death are states of being, which uses a star, right? Which, um, yeah. So um, uh, it says mi mama esta enferma. Um, yeah, so I mean, even if it's like a chronic illness, like this is really specific, but even if it's a chronic illness, it's still a star. And then, let me see, yeah, so. So a star um, is considered a state, of, I mean, loco, like this one, mi, mi hermano está loco, which means my brother is crazy. Um, loco is considered a state of being and requires the use of a star in Spanish, so easy enough. So, and then they have a little chart down here. Okay, so does anybody have any questions on this? I also wanted to include this in here for you. So I actually totally forgot to show this. I wanted to include this page in here for you because it's actually very useful. And this just gives you um, like this gives you a list of the, um, the, the stem changes that happen, Whoop. the stem changes that happen, um, the verbs that, um, the verbs that uh, like each um, change happens in. So there's like a big list of verbs here and the O-T-U-E changes. Um, there's like a, ver a list of verbs here um, <clears throat> for, um, E to I changes, there's like this. And then like, um, if you've never used SpanishDick.com, it's actually really good. So I'm actually gonna take this and I'm gonna put it in the PowerPoint. And then that way you'll have it. Does anybody have any questions or anything so far? Everybody okay with this so far? So um, I wasn't expecting to go through that so fast. Um, would anyone, would you guys like to start um, stem changing verbs or? Um, oh, I did just see um, Shamir, you just came. Oh, how are you? How are you, good? Give me one second. You guys like to practice a little bit more um, with Sarah and a star or uh, something like that? Because I actually think that they have a, and I love this website. So yeah. let's do an activity with this. Okay, thanks, Ahmad. I will check it then. Okay, so we will work on this. Hola, oh. welcome to the- No, we'll do that. Hola. Okay. Ana. So, um, y soy so for this one, it says, um, we're gonna use ser. And it says, Ana, uh, soy, oh, I just gave you the answer. It's soy Ana y soy profesora. So remember, we're gonna use ser, right? Because it's her profession, she's a professor. Okay. Hola, mi familia y yo. Okay, so this one, mi familia y yo ser de España, pero yo vivo en los Estados Unidos. So we have my family and I are from Spain, but I live in the United States. So are we going to use somos or son for this one? Remember, mi familia y yo is the subject. So what are you guys thinking? Anybody want to guess? The second one. 
Uh, this one, Son. Yeah, I'm guessing this one. Okay, it would actually be so. Mi familia y yo is the subject. We are from Spain. We, right? My family and I. We. So remember, son is the form. Let's go back here. Son is the form for ellos, they, right? So we'll go up here and remember, we, nosotros, is somos, right? So it would actually be somos. Mi familia. Then, Bienvenidos a mi. Okay, so. Let's try another one. So for this one, um, we have ben, Bienvenidos a mi apartamento, which means welcome to my apartment. And we're going to use ser las dos de la tarde, así que hay mucha luz. So it says um, it's two o'clock in the afternoon and uh, there's a lot of light outside. So are we going to use ser or a star? Remember, we're using time here and it's las dos. I'm actually going over the over this kind of stuff right now with my Spanish one class. Does anybody want to take a guess? So um, for this one, um, just a rule of thumb, you only use es with time when it's one, when it's like one o'clock, one thirty, things like that. Um, you use son when it's a number other than one. So we see it's las dos, it's two. So it's going to be son. Bienvenido. And for the este. next one, we have este. Oh, this is like, uh, OK, so we can actually do this. Does anybody want to tell me what they hear after we listen to this? Este es Manuel, mi marido. Él es encantador. Hola. Okay, so does anybody want to tell me what they heard in here? Anybody want to take a guess? Let's listen again. Este es Manuel, mi marido. Él es encantador. Hola. Anybody want to tell me what they heard? It's a form of say. Play it again. Yep, I can play it again. Este es Manuel, mi marido. Él es encantador. Hola. What are you thinking? Anybody want to take a guess? No, oh, well, no. I don't want to get that, Joe. It is, right? Este es Manuel, mi marido. Él es. Does that make sense? Este es Manuel. So it's saying, uh, this is Manuel, my husband. Does that make sense? I know like sometimes uh, listening is kind of hard because it's different, but we'll practice some more with that. Él sentado en el... Oh, that one's a little funky. So um, we have él blank sentado and el sillón so he's sitting in the chair so do we use ser or a star for he's seated so we're going to use ser or a star I don't think yeah that video is funny say that again um so uh for this one right here it's saying he is seated in the chair are we going to use ser or a star for this one So he's seated, that's a position or a location. Anybody wanna take a guess? Oh. Yeah, it's gonna be a star, right? And then we're gonna use, oh, yep, that's right. So we're gonna use a star, right? Yeah, that's Él right. está sentado en el sillón. Yep, that's correct. Estas son okay. Conchita, Y Carmen son mis plantas. En la ventana. Okay, that was funny too. So she's saying these are Conchita and Carmen. So their names. Uh, son mis plantas. They're my plants. Um, they are in the window in order to uh, receive plenty of light. So they are in the window. They are. Is it going to be esta? Or a stun, and it says conjugate a star in the AS form. So, which one's it going to be?
Anybody want to take a guess? We're going to use a star in the AS form. It's going to be the second one because esta is for she, right? Just ella. We're talking about more than one person. So it's um, ella is she, ellas is they, they, right? So, and she's talking about her two plants. So it's going to be they. Estas, okay. Me gusta coleccionar azulejos de muchos países del mundo. Estos azulejos. So it says right here, I like to collect tiles from different countries around the world. Uh, these tiles are on the wall. So what are we going to pick for this one? We're going to choose, are we going to use Sarah or a star? Anybody want to take a guess? This one might be a little bit tricky, but we'll try it. Oops. Yep, let's try a star. So they, estos azulejos. So let's try a star and see if that works. Me yep, gusta that was right. coleccionar azulejos de muchos países. So remember that's correct because it's talking about a location of something, right? Yeah, so that's correct, good job. So- ¿De qué material son? Son de cerámica. So this is asking what materials are the tiles made of? And it says they are made of ceramic, they're ceramic. So, um, Let's listen again and you tell me what you hear when she says blank de cerámica. ¿De qué material son? Son de cerámica. Okay, does anybody want to tell me what they heard? Even if you're not sure what she said, remember, let's see. Yep, that's correct, Ahmad. I just got your message. She is using the verb ser, yep. And she's using son because it's conjugated. So yes, that's correct. She is using ser. Let's see. Yep. De qué material son? Okay. Vamos. La cocina. Final del cuarto de estar. Okay. So we have. Uh, let's go. The kitchen is at the end of the living room. So. We're going to conjugate a star in the correct form. So what is our subject of this sentence? La cocina blank al final del cuarto de a star. So what is our subject of this sentence? Anybody want to guess? The kitchen. Say that again. Uh, what is the subject of this sentence? We have the kitchen is at the end of the living room. So what's our subject? Yeah, we're going to use a star. Yep, that's correct. So how are we going to conjugate a star? How are we going to change it based on the subject? And I'll even give you a hint. La cocina, the kitchen, is the subject. So how are we going to change that? How are we going to conjugate a star? And we can listen again and see what she says. Vamos, la cocina. Oh, wait, she doesn't actually say it. Whoops. I, so, um, so yeah, we are going to use a star, but how are we going to conjugate it? Based on the subject. And remember, la cocina, the kitchen is the subject. So does anybody want to take a guess on this one? Give you a hint. La cocina, it. Vamos. A star, right? La cocina está al final del cuarto de estar. And it says right here, la cocina is a singular feminine noun that takes a sta, which is the ella form of ser, okay, of a star. Does that make sense? Everybody's all right? Okay, we'll go on to the next one. ¿Dónde está mi esposo? 
como ves, mi esposo tocando el piano. So we have here, where is my husband? Um, as you can see, my husband is playing the piano. And we didn't really, this is the one with the past participle, which we always use a star for. ¿Dónde está mi esposo? So, and then ves? it says right down here. If I can move it. It says, um, it can be translated as, is can be translated as a star. A star is used to express ongoing action. So like I said, we didn't really go over that too much. Nosotros, muy contentos hoy, porque es viernes. So it says, we're very happy because it's Friday. Does, and is it, estamos or están? Remember our subject is nosotros, we. Anybody want to guess? Remember, we're using the sotros. I'll bring it back to here, and we're going to use a star. So we can see nosotros, we use estamos, because ellos or ellas, we use están, right? So it's going to be estamos. Nosotros. Sin embargo, yo estoy muy cansada porque ha sido una semana muy larga. So does anyone you want to, let's listen again and you guys tell me what you hear. Okay, what, tell me what, what verb she says here. Sin embargo, yo estoy muy cansada porque ha sido una semana muy larga. So it says, however, I'm very tired because it's been a long week. So did anybody hear what verb she used here? Did she say yo estoy or yo soy? Yes, that is, Edema just messaged me. She did say estoy. Yep, that's correct. Sin embargo. And it says estoy is the, let me move this. I can't see it with this. It says estoy is the present yo form of a star and it says a star is used to talk about temporary conditions which that's true because she's tired right now but she's probably not going to be tired a week from now okay donde esta mi baño aquí enfrente de nuestra habitación okay so um she's saying where's my bathroom it's here across from our bedroom so does anyone want to tell me if it's Sarah or a star? Anybody have a guess or want to take a shot? Let's try it. Remember, a star. We're going to say a star. Oh, this is not letting Yep, ¿Dónde está mi baño? Yep, that's correct. And it's it can be it's can be translated as a star. And remember, a star is used to talk about location. So yep, that's correct. Lo mejor de mi piso. El cuarto de estar es muy grande, pero la cocina es muy pequeña. Okay. So and you're and I'm going to ask you what you hear. So it says the best thing about my apartment. The living room is very big, but the kitchen is very small. So after she says, pero la cocina, it, does she say, la cocina está muy pequeña or la cocina es muy pequeña? Let's listen again. Lo mejor de mi piso. El cuarto de estar es muy grande, pero la cocina es muy pequeña. Does anybody want to tell me what you heard? Did she say, la cocina está muy pequeña? Or la cocina es muy pequeña. Let's listen one more time. Lo mejor de mi piso. El cuarto de estar es muy grande, pero la cocina es muy pequeña. Yep. And Ahmad just sent me a message and he said es. Yep, and that's correct. Lo mejor de mi piso. 
And then it says down here, it says, yep, the answer is ace. And ace is the present aya form of ser. And ser is used to give descriptions. Okay, we like the lesson, great. So, um, okay. So, um, does anybody have any questions or anything about what we just went over? And like I said, I do um, highly recommend uh, the Spanish dictionary website. It's great. There is, um, there's like activities on there. There's all that fun stuff, what we just went over. So, um, so for uh, the plans for next class, before I leave you guys go, and uh, just a reminder, there is lab today from one to two. So if you're having problems with anything or anything like that, feel free to stop in. Um, next class, we'll briefly review the uses of Sarah and Star. We'll review the answers to the homework that I assigned. Uh, we'll review our stem changing verb vocabulary. Um, we'll review the introduction and background information that I gave you today on the stem changing verbs. And like I said, we'll start translating and conjugating our vocabulary. And um, then I'll give you the instructions for the homework that I'll assign for that day. So let me stop my share here. And